<clears throat> so welcome back. I'm going to keep going through the FRQs, um, but I'm going to start with some review topics before we actually get into this. The objectives for the FRQ are to work with slope fields and differential equations. Um, so we'll be drawing the slope fields of a differential equation, solving the particular and general solutions to differential equations, then determining the equation of a tangent line given the differential equation, um, and an initial condition. Okay, for the review topic, I'm going to look at integration with absolute values, because it's been a while. Um, anytime you're integrating with absolute values, we'll need to separate the integral. Um, so the first thing I do is when I've got an absolute value, I try to figure out when it would equal zero. Um, that way I can figure out of, over what intervals would that absolute value part be negative. Um, we need to split the uh, integral up around those points so that any interval that is negative, we can multiply by negative one to make it positive, and then we just integrate normally. Okay, here's what it looks like. So I want to integrate from negative 1 to 4 of the absolute value of x squared minus 3x. i change my color really quick. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out when this absolute value part will be negative. Um, so I'm going to set x times x minus 3 equal to 0. So x could be 0 or 3. And then we'll test around those points to see when is this function negative. So in this case, I'm actually plugging into my original function, not the derivative. Um, if I plug in negative 1, both of these are negative, so it'll give me a positive answer. If I plug in positive 1, I'll get a negative answer. If I plug in anything above 3, I'll get a positive answer. OK, so what that tells me is this function in the absolute value is only negative from 0 to 3. So how would I integrate it? x raised to the third power divided by 3. OK, before I do that. That is. Um, I need to know where my intervals are going to be for this first part. So we said we can't integrate the absolute value directly, so anytime this absolute value part is negative, I'm going to have to make it positive. Um, so if I take away the absolute value signs, then oh, on the... Okay. Uh, so what should my first interval be then? From negative 2 to 0. Okay, so that's a negative 1 actually, but negative 1 to 0, okay. Oh, so... Um, of x raised to the third power divided by 3. Okay, that is what's going to happen when I integrate. I'm not going to integrate just yet, though. I'm going to keep writing. Um, so I need to get all the way to 4. Um, so we stopped at 0. Um, so this next interval will be from where to where? 0 to 3. 0 to 3. Okay, that one is a negative, so I'm going to multiply by a negative 1 on the outside. Um, so that will make this yeah. part positive. Okay, and then I've got one more interval. From 3 to 4. Let's see if I can squeeze that in here. So plus the integral from 3 to 4 of x squared plus 3x dx. Okay, so now we can integrate. Um, so this will become x cubed over 3 minus 3x squared over 2 from negative 1 to 0 minus x cubed over 3 minus 3 x squared over 2 from negative, oops, sorry, from 0 to positive 3, um, plus x cubed over 3 minus 3x three squared over 2 from 3 to 4. Okay, then I need to plug in my upper bound and subtract my lower bound. Um, Junho, what's going to happen to this first term? Uh, 
Okay, zero is my upper bound. I'm gonna plug that into both. Okay, then I'm gonna subtract my lower bound. Uh, negative one over three. Minus uh three over two. Okay, then I'm gonna keep going for the next one. Um, this negative sign is gonna subtract everything that I plug in here. Um, so this is minus. Okay, then, Oliver, what's going to happen for this one? Minus, um, three raised to the third power to better by three. Okay, so that'll give me three raised to the second power is then, nine. which is nine. Okay. Minus 27 divided by two. Okay, those are all the upper bounds. Minus zero. Okay, and all of the lower bounds are zero. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this arrow just so I've got a little bit more space for my last one. And then Junho finishes off. Um, Okay, you were right. So this whole thing will reduce to 27 over 2. But, oh. Um, so that was 27 over 3 minus 27 over 2. Um, okay. And then we'll simplify a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put everything over 6. Um, and then we'll combine. Um, so I'll distribute my negatives here. This will be one third, which is two six, plus three halves, which is nine six. Um, minus fifty four six. Plus eighty one six distributed that negative. Plus one hundred and twenty eight sixths. Uh, minus one hundred and forty four relief. Six. Um, minus fifty four sixths. Plus eighty one six. Okay, um, and then we can add straight across. Um, and if we do, we should get forty nine. Okay. 
So, any questions on what we did? No. Okay. So I think I'm going to skip the next one for time, um, and we'll get started on that for your response. Um, let me go back for Oliver really quick. I heard his picture catch late. <laughs> yeah, I think I caught it. It's fine. Huh? Did I? Uh, I think you caught the plank slide after it, so can okay. I try once more? Oh, thank you. There we go. Okay. So... We've got this differential equation, dy over dx is negative x y squared over 2. Um, with a particular solution, f at negative 1 is 2. Um, where y is f of x. First thing they want us to do is to sketch a slope field for the differential equation at these 12 points here. What would I have to do? <coughs> Separate the variables. Okay, I'm going to do that once I actually start solving for the math, so that's will be the first thing I do for part C. Um, but for part A, if I'm just going to sketch the slopes, um, and that means I want to keep this as a slope form for now. Oh, okay. Um, so we plug in. Uh, we're going to plug in numbers, right? Um, numbers. So if x is 0, the whole thing is 0. Um, so here's a slope of 0, a slope of 0, and a slope of 0. So just straight horizontal lines. Um, if y is 0, the slope is also 0. So here's more points where the slope is 0. Okay, then for the rest of this, we'll need to think a little bit more. Okay, at negative one, one, what's going to happen? At negative one. Negative one, one? What would my answer be? Negative. Uh, so this is negative x, y squared over two. So if x is negative 1, this would be negative negative 1 times 1 squared. So that's positive 1 over 2. Oh, positive. Okay, so um, that's my rise over run again. So if I go up 1 and then over 2, 1, 2, um, a straight line going from here to here should be the slope. I don't need all of that. I just need a little part here. Um, and I'm going to point towards that point on the other side here. Um, since I would have to go rise... 1, overrun, 1, 2, again, rise, 1, overrun, 2. Okay, um, what about negative 1, 2? Negative 1, 2, also positive. Also positive, what's the value? Uh, negative times negative 1 times 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2. Okay, so I should go rise 2 over run 1. Um, so I'm going to point towards a point somewhere up here. And yeah, that's my slope. Okay, do you know how I've got you for the next couple? Um, at 1, 1, what's going to happen? Um, 1, 1, negative 1, one half. Negative 1, half, okay. Um, so if I went up 1, I could go backwards 2, and I would have to point towards this. Um, so it would look something like... this line here. Um, but again, we don't need all of that, so I'm just going to copy that here. Here's my slope of negative one half. 
Okay, how about at 1-2? Uh, also negative. Yeah. Also negative, but what's the value? Yeah. Okay, so this should be negative 2. I plugged in x is 1 and y is 2. Um, so at negative 2, I'll go over 1 and down 2. Um, so I'm going to be aiming for this point here. Or something like that. Okay, last two. Um, Jinho, I'm going to have you do one more and then Oliver will do the last one. So at the point 2, 1, what's going to happen? Uh, negative 1. Negative 1, perfect. Okay, so that would be over 1 and then down 1. Um, I'm actually going to aim at this one, up 1, left 1. For my point, I think. So something like that. There we go. Okay. Um, and then Oliver, last one, two two. Uh, so negative two times four is eight divided by two is minus four. Minus four. Okay. So we go down one, two, three, four, and then over one. So I should be aiming somewhere here-ish. And we'll be good for our slope field. Um, any questions on what we did for part A? No. All right, then we'll start on B. Um, so for part B, I need to write the equation of a tangent line. Um, what's my general form for a tangent line first? y minus b equals the derivative of f x times a minus x. Okay, so derivative at our x point, which is a, times x minus a. Okay, so for this I need an x and a y value, so that's a and b. Um, so this should be y minus what? Y minus... Uh, 2. 2. Is equal to... What's our derivative um, at negative 1? <coughs> Um, minus 1 times 4 divided by 2 is minus 2. Okay, times x minus, what's our a? Minus 1. Okay, I think this should be positive actually, because our whole slope is our whole slope is already negative. Okay, um, so it's positive two, and then x is negative one, so this will be minus negative one is plus one. Okay, that's actually already an equation for a line, so I can just leave it like that. <coughs> okay, any questions on B? Okay, then part C. Okay, now we're ready to do our um, Oliver. We want to do right at the start. So I want my particular solution to this differential equation. So what's my first step? Uh, separate the variables. Separate the variables. 
Okay, so this is the stuff that is worth the most amount of points in your whole AP exam. Um, because if you don't separate your variables, um, you lose six points worth of free response, usually. So I'm going to separate my variables. This will be dy over y squared is equal to negative x over 2 dx. Okay, once we've got this step, then we, uh, we qualify for the rest of the free response credit. Okay, we separated our variables. What's next? We integrate and solve for y. Okay, integrate and solve for y. Okay, so I can pull out that constant there. Um, <clears throat> 1 over y squared <clears throat> is the same thing as y to the negative 2 power. So what happens when I integrate y to the negative 2 power? y raised to the two, second power divided by 2 minus 2y. I'm going to add 1 to the power divided by the new power, so this should be y to what power? 1. Close. Negative 1. Negative 1. Divided by negative 1. Okay. Um, I would have a plus c, but I'm going to add that to the other side. Um, and because these are both constants, but they're not from the same integral, um, that plus c and plus c don't cancel, because we don't know they're the same constant. Um, they could be zero, but they could not be. Um, so I'm just going to write a plus c on any of the sides you want, and I'm going to write it on this side, just because we're already solving for y. So I've got the negative one-half on the outside, and then if you integrate x, you get x squared over 2 plus c. Okay, any questions so far? No. No. Okay, that was all antiderivatives. Um, so at any point we want, we can solve for c. Um, right now, I feel like this maybe isn't the best time, so I'm going to wait one more step maybe um, before I plug in my x and y and solve for c. And we'll come back in for a third step and finish off that way. So this will be y to the negative 1 power is equal to negative x squared over 4 plus c times negative 1, which would just change these signs. Okay, <clears throat> um, a number times a constant is a constant, which is why I didn't actually change the sign here. Um, because we don't know if c is positive or negative anyways, so if you multiply negative 1 times c, it'll still be c. Okay, um, then I can plug in our condition. Um, when x is negative 1, y is 2. So that'll be 1 half is equal to uh, 1 fourth plus c, or c is equal to 1 fourth. And then I can go from here and keep solving now that we know c. So 1 over y is equal to x squared over 4 plus 1 over 4 or 1 over y equals x squared plus 1 over 4. So I could cross multiply. And I would get 4 over x squared plus 1 is equal to y. Okay, um, any questions on anything we did? No. Okay. Now flash the scoring guides just to show how we would have been scored. Okay, for the slope fields. Uh, 
Um, we've got one point just for the zero slopes, so at both of the axes, everything should be zero. Um, one point for the non-zero slopes. Um, usually they grade those as general trends, so if this is anything that looks positive, they'll take it. And it should be getting more steep as you go up. Okay, same thing here. This is negative, and we're getting more steep as we go up. Negative, and we're getting more steep as we go up. So you look for general trends, not how accurate is your uh, hash mark. Okay, our equation was fine, um, and our final answer is fine, so it should be good in the intermediary steps, but it is important to show your work uh, because almost all of your credit, so five out of six points, is your process. And then you'll notice their note. You get zero points if there's no separation of variables, so if you did not show your step where you separated your x and y, even if you get the right answer, y equals four over x squared plus one, you still get zero out of six points here. So it's really important, especially to show your first step. Okay, and that's it for this one. Um, so for the homework, um, we're going to keep going with the rest of this uh, 2005 Form B for your response. Um, you guys finished 1, 2, and 3 last class. So we've got four and five left, and I skipped to number six because I wanted to do a differential equation with both of you guys. Which numbers again? Uh, so Three. you guys are doing four and five this time. For last class, you already did okay. two and three. Okay, thank you. All right. And so thank you guys very much for coming. And I will see you on Friday. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye. Bye.